بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله with great pleasure جزاك الله خير for the committee for the imams for the students of knowledge for inviting me to come to such a beautiful and amazing community Keithley you have a special place in my heart wallahi and I'm going to go I'm going to walk away from here not just because I came here because I was invited I'm going to walk away from here because of the brotherhood that I've already seen and the unity amongst the communities has been amazing. But before I go any further, I want to start off by saying, all praise be to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most powerful. It's only Him we worship, only Him we bow down to, and only Him we turn to when we're in need. Also, I'd like to send peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this is a time of unity. This is a time of Get, go, turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Best believe Wallahi you are blessed You woke up today With a roof over your head You woke up today With breathing And every breath that you took Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gave that permission to you For every time you took a step For every time you blinked For every time you heard something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Gave your body that permission In order for it To do what? To turn back to him And wholeheartedly No half-hearted I'm sick and tired of people saying, oh, look at this brother, look at this sister. This has now become a time where she or he is only a Ramadan Muslim. So what if they are Ramadan Muslim? So what if they were jahil? So what if they didn't obey Allah to the best of their abilities? But Ramadan is here. They've taken the opportunity to better themselves as a Muslim. Why are we as Muslims putting them down? So what if the sister, for the first time she established in the hijab, so why for the first time you see the brother that stopped his drug dealing and he's now in the house of Allah? Why is he looked down upon? Why is he neglected? Why is it that the brothers that come out of jail, they've left their lifestyle and they're not even welcomed in their communities? Why? You ask yourselves, these are the people that inshallah wa ta'ala will change the world. People like Salah al-Din al-Ayyub, what happened to him? He wasn't the best of practicing people in his, in his teenage years. Then I have the tawfiq of Allah. Brother, do not record me. I do not like to hear my voice as well. MashaAllah, brother, forgot to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. But to go further, look at what happened in Salah Hadi Ayyub. In his teenage years, he wasn't the best of practicing people. And from the tawfiq of Allah, the blessings, the mercy, the guidance of Allah, when he guided Salah Hadi Ayyub, that's me and you, bro. Our, our, look, the teenagers. The youngsters, those that are not married, those that are even married, bro, I class anybody under the age of 40 as a youth. So I'm speaking to you. Those of you that even if you're in your 35s and you've got your grey beards, brother, I'm not going to call you uncle. You're a youth. So best believe, even in your jahil states and the traits of jahiliyyah you have within yourself, it is time for you to change. And how does Salah Hadi Ayyubi change? He changed and look at the look at the ripple effect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him have with his name. Even to today, this was a man that conquered Jerusalem. And you would think that you yourself, my brother, you and your jahiliyyah, you are someone that disobeyed Allah, that disobeyed your parents. There is time for you to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what if you are a Ramadan Muslim? Make sure that this Ramadan, that you live every single day after Ramadan like it's Ramadan. And let Jannah be your Eid. Let Jannah be your celebration. Let Jannah be something that you look forward to. Not because of your friends and your families that you're with in this dunya, but because you stand in front of Allah, but naked. You're not going to look around, bro. You're not going to look around and figure, you know what, bro? I can't help but to lower my gaze. The sisters are naked. The women are naked. The men are naked. You're going to be so fearful on Yom Qiyama. You're not going to even look at them. But nowadays, we don't even lower our gaze when it comes to outside. We all fall into this, whether you're married or not. Don't tell me, I don't care how righteous, pious, or how full of the Quran you think you are. Actually, there is a fitna of this world. And the fitna is real. And every single one of us live it. And it's only getting worse. But how can you better yourself in this fitna? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the one that prays Isha with the Imam, it's like he's praying half of the night in the masjid. And the one that prays Isha and Taraweeh, 
Like what every single one of you has done today. Like from the beginning, you paid Isha, you paid Taraweeh, the 20 Ruqa, and including the three Witr, you remained. What does, what, what does the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, it's like you've prayed the whole night. So even you, O oh Muslims, if you go home now, and you slept, and you woke up for suhoor, you woke up for fajr, it's like you've prayed the whole night because of what you just done today. This is how simple this religion is. This religion has been, bro, it's been put in place in order to make your lives very simple. Name me one thing that in this religion that makes your life hard. You're miserable, you're depressed, you're sad because you are away from the remembrance of Allah. And this is the reality, you Muslims. We want victory within the Ummah. We want the victory within Syria, Palestine, Iraq, where Kashmir, wherever it may be, bro. Kurdistan, Afghanistan, Egypt, Morocco. Actually, we're all suffering. Even in the Muslim countries, we're suffering. You know why? Because we have become blinded to the love of this dunya. And this is something that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned. He said there will come a time where the ummah, the ummah will be, they will, they will hate death and they have love for this dunya. What do you love in this dunya that's going to, actually everything in this dunya is going to break your heart. Name me something that's not going to break your heart. Your own wife is going to break your heart, but you know what? Because if you were to die, she could, go next, uh, she could go the next day and get married again. You would die, your kids will forget about you. You would die, your job will forget about you. They will have one day of remembrance for you because you worked in the business, in the company, and that is it. That is it. But does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever forget about you, O oh servant of Allah? Ya ibadi. He doesn't just call you, O oh servants. He goes, Ya ibadi. He's labeling you to be as for him. You belong to him. Ya ibadi, O oh my servants. My brother, if we got a nice car outside, Brother's driving a Range Rover, the brother's driving a Porsche, the brother's driving a Ferrari. You walk past people and people will be talking, hold on, who does this car belong to? Out of pride you would say, I will cast for this car. So you know what? I'm going to label this car as mine because it is mine. So this is my car. But look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He labels you, oh my servants. You don't belong to your family. You don't belong to your wife. You don't belong to your kids. You don't belong to the community. You don't belong to the imam or the scholars or the Muslim leaders. You belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And let me make it clear to every single Muslim that is here. For those of you, for the youngsters, I'm not here to attack the adults. I'm going to speak to the youngsters. And let me make it clear to every single one of you here, Paul. If you are turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time in your life, if you are 15, 16, 17, 18, actually even 21, Use this opportunity to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When was the last time you, you, you thanked Allah? When was the last time you thanked Allah for the guidance that he has given you? Did you know that in Surah Fatiha, if you pray your five daily prayers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance at least 17 times a day. In Surah Al-Fatiha, we ask him, Ya Rabb, we ask him for guidance. And what does he do? In the next surah, Surah Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif, Lam, Mim. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا وَهِدَ فِيهِ This is a book that has no doubts. This is a book that is clear. So whenever you feel depressed or sad, on your, actually, whatever mental health issues that you got, let me make it clear that your shifa, your cure, is the book of Allah. Not the medicine that they prescribe you in the GP or in the hospital. It is the book of Allah. How many people do you know, bro? How many people do you know that they themselves were sick and twisted? I was once upon a time that person. Oppressing people, making their life miserable, attacking them, whatever it may be. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humbled me and put me in prison. I spent my time in prison. Alhamdulillah. When people ask me about my prison life, I told them, Rabbil Kaaba, prison life was one of the happiest moments of my life. You know why? I got closer to the book of Allah. You know why? I was reading about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr radiyallahu Umar. Uh, uh, Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. Wa Umar radiyallahu anhu. Wa, Abu, wa Uthman. Wa Ali. Uh, you name it. All of the companions. Bilal. The Mu'addin of the Prophet. I fell in love with them. 
But how did I fall in love with the Quran? Because Quran was secondary. How did I fall in love with the book of Allah? It was described in the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was described as a walking Quran. So how did I fall in love with the book of Allah? I fell in love with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I fell in love with his character. I fell in love with his etiquettes and his manners. I fell in love with the man that showed mercy to the Muslim and the non-Muslim. I fell in love with the man that he showed mercy to the elderly and the youngsters. Not the man that comes to you in the masjid because he's got a grey beard. The uncle tells you, get up young man, twisting your ears and tell you to get up and pray your sunnah. This ain't from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have made the youth hate the deen because of us as adults. We've hate, we, we have showed such a bad behavior towards the youngsters. They, they've hated the deen because of our character. Ask every single father here. Us every single uncle here, us every single elderly here, the front row was filled with youngsters, youngsters that led salah. How many communities can say, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we have succeeded, Alhamdulillah, we have victory. You know why, oh Muslims, from when you see the youngsters in the front row, not because of a waste man called Akhi Ayman that they came here, but they came here because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They came here because of taraweeh and the blessings of what it means to read Salat al-Isha in Jama'ah. Oh Muslims, how can you change your ways? How can you change your ways? It is very simple. Someone came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, Oh Rasulullah, what does it mean for me to enter Jannah? And I'm paraphrasing, alhamdulillah, I've got the people of knowledge in front of me here. So please, I know it's been Ramadan and we've been fasting and my knowledge is not right there right now. So if I make a mistake, please do not bash me. Just correct me. I'm your brother in Islam. So please, brothers. They came to the Prophet. What can I do to get to Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ replied with something as simple as you follow and you, and you worship, which is the shahada, yeah? Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. You have to believe in this. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. What's next? Establish your five daily prayers. What's next? Zakah. What's next? Fasting. And how, sorry, fasting then zakah. How much is zakah, bro? I want the youngsters to answer. How much is zakah that you have to pay? 2.5%. Jazakallah khair. And this community have succeeded once again. Allahumma barak. For when the youngsters know these things, Allahu Akbar, you've succeeded. There's a victory within this ummah. And maybe it starts from Kifli. I don't like the name Kifli, but it is where it is, yeah? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And what's the last thing he mentioned? Hajj. So he said to the Prophet Sallallahu I bear witness, there is no worthy of worship except you, Ya Allah. And I bear witness that you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the Prophet and servant of Allah. What's next? I will establish my five daily prayers. No sunnah, no witr, no nothing, nothing more. No qiyam al -layl. I will only pray my five daily prayers. And I will only fast when? In the month of Ramadan, nothing outside of Ramadan, nothing. And I will only pay 2.5% of my zakat, of my wealth to you. Uh, to, uh, to, sorry, towards the ummah. That's it. And then I will only establish hajj when I am suitable to establish hajj. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said to his companions, if he was to stick to this, he has a place in Jannah. How simple is that, O Muslims? Don't come to me with nothing else, Akhi. Be wary as you could be one of the people that wallahi has a place in Jahannam but this is the month there will be a caller there will be a caller they'll be calling out to you oh Muslims this is your time to shine how is their time to shine bro? you have the month of Ramadan to shine you have the month of Ramadan to redeem yourself in the eyes of Allah not in the eyes of your community I don't care if you were to pray in the front row or the back row, but actually your intention and your connection with Allah could be better than every single person here, including the Imam. That's depending on you, O oh Muslim. So it doesn't matter if you're front row or the back row. It doesn't matter what you do. But work on your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come to the masjid. Pray Fajr in the masjid. If not Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, or, or Isha. It's simple as that. Make an oath within yourself. Between yourself and Allah right now, right here. Don't tell me, I'm going to put up my hands up, amen, because I make an oath. No, 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 no. Make an oath within yourselves, O Muslims. 
that from today onwards, I'm going to establish at least one salah in the masjid. And you will see the difference. You will see the mountains that Allah will move for you. You will see the roads that Allah will clear for you. You think, you think just because the Anbiya, the Prophets, before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like Musa Alaihi Salam, what was his slogan for his Ummah, for his nation? Sami'na wa? La la. This is from the, the nation of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But they had, a, they, had a, they had a statement. Sami'na wa? Asa. We hear and we disobey. This is what happened to the nation of Musa. Even after he helped them and through the mercy of Allah, he split the, he split the ocean for them. Even then, they neglected him and pushed him away, O Musa. What's the slogan for the nation of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You all said it. Sami'na, we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey, O Muslims. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were, we, we were asked to pray 50 times a day. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on going back and he kept on saying, this is too much for my ummah. 50 times and he kept on going down, kept on until to the, until it became five. But the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, even though we got dropped from 50 to five, if you were to pray your five daily prayers, you'll get rewarded like you prayed your 50. Look how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. You woke up today because Allah wanted you to. You're breathing because Allah wanted you to. You came to the masjid because Allah wanted you to. So what are you going to do with what Allah gave you? The blessings that he gave you. You got a roof over your head. You got eyes to see. You got ears to hear from. You got a mouth to speak from and eat from. What are you going to do with Muslims? You humble yourself in the eyes of the people, but most importantly in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the youngsters, my bro, give up everything that you're doing. I see brothers today, today, we, we, I pulled up to Keefley and a couple cars pulled up but there was one car in particular subhanallah akhi during the month of Ramadan they pulled up next to me just to give me salam I love that they spread their salam they came to give me salam and I love that as brothers regardless of our nationalities and our color and our complexion alhamdulillah they came they acknowledged me as a Muslim they came to give salam but I can't help to say and mention this that I smell weed from the car. Oh, Muslims, we're suffering. We're suffering not because of just your sins. It's all of our sins that we're doing in private. Look at the sacrifice of Ramadan. We're not just leaving off what is haram. We are also leaving off what is halal. That's food only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is time to change. Oh, youngsters, oh, youth. Let me make it clear to every single one of you here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions He mentions this clearly uh, Sorry, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions this and he mentions this clearly He goes, every single person in my ummah will be forgiven except for the one that publicly and openly shows off his sin So if you got Instagram bro and you got Snapchat and you got TikTok and you got WhatsApp story, whatever it may be if you're committing a sin leave it between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not show it off. Do not record yourself publicly showing your sin. Because you, oh brother, for every single eye that saw that sin, it's for every single eye that's going to stand in front of Allah that's going to vouch against you. Do you want that? Imagine your own Muslim brothers coming to you in front of Allah. Wow, wow, this is a day. This is a day where it's 50,000 years long. This is a day where the sun is dragged a one mile above your head. This is a day where if a woman was pregnant, because of the severity of this day, if a woman was pregnant, she would lose her child. This is a day where a child will have gray hair. And don't tell me you're prepared for your maqiyama. Because I'm not. Wallahi, I'm not. I'm fearful. If I were to die right now, I could go. I don't think I will come 500 years of smelling gin because of the sins we have in private. Because of how we are with our wives and our kids and our companions and because of our tons upon the people of backbiting. Are we prepared to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and it and should mean every single one of you should say, I am not prepared to stand in front of Allah. But it's time for you to shine on Muslims. It's time for you to better yourself. It's time for you to, inshallah wa ta'ala, to move forward as one unit. I don't call myself nothing. Don't come to me with these terms. I'm a Muslim. The Quran and the Sunnah. Leave me be. I follow companions and that's it. What tabi'een? The scholars, the truth. That's it, bro. Don't come to me with this name and that name. Akhir, you are Muslim. Allah didn't call you anything else. The companions didn't call themselves anything else. Label yourself as a Muslim and you follow the Quran and the Sunnah to your best of your abilities. That's it. Don't come to me with any of the names. We are Muslim, alhamdulillah. We're going to be, inshallah wa ta'ala, standing in front of Allah. Though you want to stand in front of Allah where Allah tells you, idkhuluha bi salam and enter my jannah through tranquility and peace. Idkhuluha and enter it. The paradise of wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. Every single one of us, there's a place in Jannah for you. But it's what you do that keeps that distance away from Jannah. It's what you do in this dunya that's going to affect your akhirah. And without going into any further, and I know we've all been fasting, and we've got family and loved ones and our wives, and I hope not boyfriends and girlfriends, yeah? But we've got our wives and our husbands waiting for us at home. But alhamdulillah, what do you do with yourselves, O Muslims? You walk away with here, inshallah wa ta'ala, that you know. And I'm going to ask you three questions, and I see this everywhere I go. Are you ready for these three questions, yeah? Huh? For those of you that are in the middle, the doors over there, because you know we're all sleeping already. Keep it moving, inshallah. I'm going to ask, are you all ready? Yes. Bismillah. The first question is, who is your Lord? Allah. Brother, say it with passion, man. Say it with, with, with conviction that Allah is your Lord. So when you answer, you answer with, with comfort that Allah is your Lord. So I'm going to ask you again. Who is your Lord? Allah. Where is your deen? Allah. And who is your prophet? Allah. Sallallahu Now I'm going to ask you those three questions again. But I want every single one of you to answer with your mouth closed. Who is your Lord? What is your deen? And who is your prophet? If you worshipped Allah and followed the Prophet wasallam to your best of your abilities in the grave, when the angels ask you these three questions, you will answer like the first time with comfort. But if you neglected the Quran and you neglected the Sunnah and you didn't follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, understand this, you will be in your grave humming like you just done. Mm-hmm. The angels are going to help you, bro. Yeah. Your actions and your etiquette and your character and your behavior with people inside the mosque and outside the mosque and your non-Muslim neighbors, you will answer like you did the first time. And I'm going to end it on this, inshallah wa ta'ala, because we're all hungry. Everybody wants to grab a milkshake, maybe. Wherever it may be. Maybe some karak chai. I don't know. It is where it is. But I'm going to end you on this, my dear respected brothers and sisters. You see, something through my all trials and tribulations, there was one thing that gave me comfort in every, like none other. It, it wasn't just the salah. It wasn't just being able to help people. and fit. No, there was one thing that helped me like no other. You see, after I've been stabbed, after I got kidnapped, after I got tortured, even till now, I live with a bag on my stomach. I have a bag here. So, the doctors told me I'm not allowed to fast yet, amen, because it could affect your health. But alhamdulillah, two days, and Allah has made it easy for me. But for the past few Ramadans, I've never fasted because of my condition. But this year, Allah has made it very simple for me. Allah, Akbar, look at the mercy of Allah. But one of the things, wallahi, that helps me, and it should help every single Muslim, is understanding the, the, yani, the blessings of giving sadaqah. You see, after being stabbed and getting kidnapped and getting tortured, I got told I can never have kids. And I used to do a lot of work, like sending containers to Syria, 
sending containers to the Middle East in order for them. And this is from 2015, 16, 17, you name it, and 18. I used to send a lot of containers, sending clothes, like all of us, not just me, just a big group of brothers. But I spoke to my teacher, my teacher goes, Amen, giving charity. I said to him, what are you talking about? I'm doing everything I can. My my actions are there. We're going to houses. We're picking up clothes. We're picking up food. We're sending it to... He goes, la, yeah, amen. Give in charity. Give from your pocket. And then you would see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would do for you. Yeah, amen. You would be able to see that whatever you're struggling with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you with whatever you wanted, inshallah. So what did I do? I went to Santander Bank. I said, yo... I want every penny that I have in my account. I signed for it. They put it in an envelope. I don't even know how much it was. They gave it an envelope. I said to the lady, thank you. Signed for it. I went straight to the masjid. I gave every penny I had to my name, to my name. Not to say that I didn't have money coming in to my account. But in that moment, I was basically broke. Nothing to my name. I gave it for the sake of Allah and I made I made a dua, not physically, not verbally, but I made a dua within myself. I said, Ya Allah, you know what I want. You know what your, your, your servant wants. A month later, even though I got told I can never have kids because of the torture, because of the stabbing, and because I, they, they removed two-thirds of my stomach. On top of that, I lost over two liters of blood just through my private part. So you could tell the severity of the torture. You could tell the severity of the pain that I was going through. I was in hospital for four months. But alhamdulillah, I did this one act. A month later, my wife surprised me with a pregnancy test. Is your Lord not merciful? Is your Lord not, ble- is your Lord not giving you blessings? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. My dear respected brothers and sisters, for those of you that are here, be like, be like the companions that gave for the sake of Allah. That gave that whatever trials and tribulations you're going through at home with your wife or your husband, whatever trials and tribulations you're going home with work, whatever trials and tribulations you're going home in school, in your college, your university, you give with the intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making it easy for you. And I don't expect you to every single one of you now to get up and start giving money to one ummah because they're here. Wallahi, I'm not. I'm not expecting you to get up and give them to them. You can give it in secret between yourself and Allah. Give it where no one's watching. You can give it to them. You can give it to another charity. You can give it to a family that's needy. But keep this secret between you and Allah to such a level that when you're given with your right hand, that even your left hand doesn't know what it has given. And this is the truth, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Wallahi, I love you for the sake of Allah. And wallah al if I've wronged you in any way, wallah, if I've, if, if I've made any mistakes in whatever I say, I, it is upon a Muslim to correct another Muslim. And, I'm gonna, and I keep saying I'm going to end it on this, but I'm going to end it on this now. You see, there's two brothers. Both of them practicing brothers. They're somewhere in the UK. I can't name the city because of people will start to realize who they are and so on and so forth. But I've been up and down the country, so... I know the story of these two brothers. These two brothers were very practicing, but one of them fell off. One of them fell off to start to such a level he started doing drug dealing. To such a level he started becoming one of the biggest drug dealers in his area. To such a level that his brother boycotted him. His own blood brother didn't cut the ties of kinship, but boycotted him. To such a level that when his older brother's son became in hospital and sick, he wanted to come and show his face. This is the brother that was jahil. What did his older brother say? He said, my son doesn't have an uncle. And I don't have a brother. You turned away from Allah. And you started to become a drug dealer. And started harming the community. I don't want to see your face. If my son was to die, don't even come to the janazah. He boycotted him completely. And what happened to that brother that lost his way? He was so hurt because of his actions of his older brother. So hurt, it was painful for him. What did he do? There was a time where he was just driving. And something told him, you need to come to the masjid and pray. He came to the masjid. Look at the blessing of just coming to the masjid. He came to the masjid. He prayed two rak'ah. 
And in that two rak'ah that he prayed to Allah, he started crying his eyes out. What am I doing with myself? I was guided. Why have I become misguided? Because of the likes and the desires of this dunya. And then what did he do? He went to the drug dealers that he was drug dealing with because the line was under him. The trap phone was under his name. He went, he said, yo man, then where's the trap phone? He took the phone, took out the SIM card and he broke it to pieces. All of his friends were like, what are you doing? You're stopping us from making money. He said, there's no more money. What have I done with myself? How long have I neglected Allah? How many salahs have I neglected? My dear respected brothers and sisters, sometimes it's good to boycott a brother so he could learn from his mistakes. And sometimes in that boycott, you make dua for him. You give sadaqah on his behalf in order for Allah to guide his heart back to the deen of Allah. You see, you're going home right now. And I want you to answer this. How many of you still have your mom and dad? Put your hand up. Put your hand up if you still got your mom and dad. You see, I'm jealous of you, Muslims. I can't go back home to my mom. This is my second Ramadan without my mother. She got buried in Mecca, walhamdulillah. The first time going to Umrah. And the first time she got buried in Mecca. And every single time, and look at the blessings of Allah. That I can't go to the nearest graveyard and see my mother's grave. But it has to be an invitation directly from Allah. To come back to the house of Allah in Mecca. To at least visit my mother's grave. My dear Muslims, you have your parents. Go home. Cherish them. Go to your nearest shop if it's open. And buy them something that is pleasing to your parents. Even if it's few pounds. This is the sadaqah that I expect you to do and not to give to the brothers. Because why? Sadaqah starts at home. Charity starts at home. So you go and give them something that is pleasing, that is loving. And if you, you're, swallow your pride, man. Swallow your arrogance. Go home and hug your mother. If you have run the tada, I'm, I'm sorry, mom. I miss you, mom. I'm sorry for letting my work and my wife and my kids and my know-how to get involved in between us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dad, for all the nights that you, you were working to make sure that I was fed. I'm sorry for not showing you the gratitude that you deserve. Go home. Hug them. Kiss them. Even if it means you get a bowl of water and you put it in the front of your mother's feet and you massage your mother's feet, this is something that you should do, O Muslims. I love you all for the sake of Allah. Jazakallah khairan for your time. And inshallah wa ta'ala, this is not going to be the last time that I come back to this beautiful community. And for the sisters, one last message. Just keep away from men that are selling you a dream of one day becoming your husband. If a man is really a man, he will come to the doorsteps of your father and ask for your hand in the real manner. Like a real man would. Not a man that tells you to waste your time by haram relationship. And then the moment he's done with you. And even if you fall into fitna, such as zina. Then understand he will use it against you. And the moment he's done with you, he will throw you in the trash. And he will go and do that to someone else's daughter. So understand this, oh sisters. You lot are the backbone of this ummah. You have raised great men of this ummah. Allahu Akbar. So Jazakallah khairan. I love you all for the sake of Allah. And if I've said anything to harm this community, please forgive me. Please forgive me as your brother, not as your imam, not as your sheikh, not as your talib al-ilm. I am your brother in Islam. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.